welcome listeners back to Conversations with John and today with uh, my good friend and a longtime leader of uh, the conference. Uh, he's been in a couple of conferences and maybe he can tell you a little bit about that. David Gajewski. Uh, David is currently serving as the conference minister in New York. David, say a few words about yourself. Sure. Good morning, John. Um, yeah, I've been in conference ministry for 23 years now. Are you the senior? Yeah, well, they call me the dinosaur, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But eight years um, here in the New York conference. All right. And, you know, as you know, the New York conference is uh, all UCC churches located specifically in New York State. So from Long Island to Niagara Falls and all the places in between. Right. Um, and it's a conference that I find very exciting because of the amount of diversity that we have. That's right. You know, I think I counted that on any given Sunday, UCC worship is happening in at least five or six different languages. <laughs> and small rural congregations, uh, heart of the urban core in New York, suburbs, you've got it all. Small town. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a, I love it. This is the the most exciting ministry I've had in my life. <laughs> but you're very good at this work and you're in the right place at the right time. Thank you. So Thank you. Uh, tell me, David, uh, we, we're we all living through this season of pandemic. It's what Mike Denton called the slow tsunami. Um, and you have become in New York the epicenter and you even have what some are calling now the epicenter of the epicenter in, in Queens. Uh, what are you seeing? Well, we are um, we're really uh, reaching out significantly to be in touch with all of our pastors. Okay. Um, we're offering virtual office hours. Uh, we're doing a series of association town halls where clergy come in with a, into our Zoom. And then also my staff is calling every single clergy person in New York State. And then also once a week, we send out a survey to, to the clergy with a series of questions. It's the same questions every week. Yes. On how are they? What do they need? Including some financial concerns that they may have. Okay. So uh, what am I seeing? Um, first, uh, for the past two Sundays, I've attended um, eight worship services each <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and um, what, what is so heartening yeah. is the number of churches and clergy who never thought that they would move into live streaming um, and are just stepping up to the plate. Many of them scared of what they're doing, but knowing that they're going to do it anyway. And, uh, and, and they're accomplishing it. And I, I love to see the fireside chats that our clergy are doing to their congregations because they're really from the heart. Yes. Know? So um, our embracing technology is the first thing that uh, I'm, I'm very excited about and, and glad to see that our clergy are doing. And it's funny, for how long did, have we resisted this? This has been around and, oh, we can't do that. We have too many old people. They won't right. know what to do. And when forced with no choice, you here do. we are. <laughs> yeah. I think another thing that I'm hearing articulated uh, by both clergy and laity is this uh, concept that uh, the church is not closed or canceled or postponed. Our building is closed and the ministry of the church is continuing. Okay. Just in new ways. Um, and I hear that theme both in urban and rural uh, settings. Um, I am also beginning to see some, uh, what I believe is a trauma induced uh, weariness yeah. on the part of some of our clergy. Yesterday, we had a meeting with, um, with New York Metro clergy, and several of them said, you know, if you asked me how I was three days ago, I would have told you great, but that's not how I am today. Oh, my. And they're tired, you know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that the idea that this is a, a a weariness that is induced by trauma is right on the mark. Right. Um, so we, we're just continuing to try to remain in touch, let our clergy know that they can call us, talk to us, Zoom with us whenever they're in need, 
and also being very proactive in reaching out to them. Yes. I'm, I'm concerned about the clergy. Well, it's, um, it's sad for me to hear that these individuals who have given their life in service are called to serve at a time like this. And by God, we need them, but it does wear on the soul and the heart. Um, what about chaplains in your conference? Wow, that's, uh, that's really a great question. We actually had a chaplain call us up a day before yesterday. Um, she was very upset because her hospital refused to uh, allow her to wear a mask, which oh, I no. thought was insane, Oh no! Um, but also required her to go to work in the hospital. Oh, my. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's one phone call we got. So I can't say that's a trend, but it certainly was very concerning to hear Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Um, and sort of on the other side of that, I, I have, um, I'm aware of a campus chap chaplain, um, who's learned how to do a game night with all of her <laughs> students. So they, they're doing scavenger hunts in their oh, own wow. homes. <laughs> You know, it's funny. I, yesterday afternoon, I got a text from my son in Chicago said, I think I've, our favorite card game is called Oh Hell. He said, I think I found a way to play Oh Hell on Google Hangout. You want to try it tonight? <laughs> and that's what we did last night. We spent the evening playing cards with our son in cool. uh, Chicago. Yeah, that's beautiful. I, I want to press a little bit on the what are you saying question. The whole world is watching what's unfolding in what, as I said, is the epicenter. We've seen pictures of dead bodies lying in refrigerated trucks. Surely you and your clergy are seeing that. And, and how are you responding to that? And, and how is the church, as you see it, responding to this? And you talked about the trauma-induced weariness. That has to be a part of this. Yeah. Well, uh, so first... Um, we're very appreciative of uh, Governor Cuomo's, oh uh, what I would say, his ministry to New York State. <laughs> you know, he's really being the pastor of the state right now. To, to the country, really. Yeah. Absent leadership. I, I will not miss his daily briefing. 1130 every day, I tune <laughs> him in. And we get the real, the real deal, you know. And it's not all good news. And uh, our... The tragedy unfolding in New York City is um, the lack of ventilators. Um, right. And it appears after I read an article in New York Times on Sunday that um, they're just not there to come. There, there is no, I, I was unaware of this and I think that Cuomo was not completely aware either that there really isn't a big stockpile somewhere that somebody's sitting on. <clears throat> um, and what that means is that doctors need to make life and death decisions of who gets put on a ventilator and who doesn't. Um, and, and clergy are right there in the middle of the, of the families as yeah. those decisions are made, um, which is you know, just a, a, a real uh, horrific place to be. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we are... Um, we're scared, I guess. I think that's the most honest thing I can tell you is that we're really scared. Oh um, we have not reached the apex of, right. um, of the virus in New York City. Um, Governor Cuomo is saying about another 10 days, um, which means the amount, the, the number of increasing deaths each right. day is going to increase at least for another 10 days. And yes. I think we were, I think we were, at a thousand deaths uh, in one day. I, I'm not positive of that, but I, I think that's what I heard. The, the increase is in arithmetic, it's exponential. Right. It's doubling so fast. Right. So David, um, what are you learning through all of this? Um, first, I'm learning that um, the clergy have, uh, a lot more flexibility than they thought they did. Um, and they, out of necessity, they are doing things that they have never been comfortable doing before. So that, wow. that's the first thing. The second thing is um, a slow recognition 
that um, when when we're over and done with this and we look back, you know, five years from now to that time in um, 2020, um, it's not going to be back to normal. It's going to be a new normal. Yes. And, and beginning to, to envision what that new normal for church is going to be and live into it is, I think, something we're all learning about right now. You know, like, like so many of our churches are asking us about online donation options, uh, which we, you know, we're working with every single church to be able to set that up. The, the fact is, this is not something that's just going to last during the coronavirus. The online donation is, going, is the future, and, and that's, that's the new normal for our churches. I met with our historical council yesterday, and they always ask me for homework, tasks that they can do. And one of the things I said is what you've just said, that when we come to the end of this, we're not going backwards. This is a turning point in the life of the church. And I said to the historical council, I really want you to keep your eyes and ears open about what we will do differently on the other side of this because of this. It's that kind of moment, and you're right. Right. Yeah, we're we're learning through uh, through real difficulty, mm. um, and we're we're seeing a new vision uh, because we are being forced to right now. We have no choice. Right, we have no choice. Yeah, so um, I, I think that you know just emphasizing that the clergy are learning how to do caring pastoral ministry even right. when you're sheltered down. You know, okay. That, that I think is the 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 most wonderful revelation that we're all seeing, and all, I believe all the clergy are are finding that as well. And are you hearing from them that those with whom they visit virtually or digitally rather than personally are finding that experience as meaningful? Um, I, I'm not sure I could say yes to that question. Um, there are we have a faith that that's an incarnational faith yes and being physically together is very important to, and we miss something deep right. about the, the touch and the contact and the seeing exactly. yeah. right so no we can't replace uh you know passing the peace and actually hugging one another um however what we are seeing and this is a particularly true for those who are doing worship in zoom is the use of the chat room. Yes. During worship. I've noticed that too, which you don't do. You don't whisper to each other in the middle right. of the service. And, 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 and in some ways, folks are just really loving that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> They're able to talk to one another. The sermon they love. and <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, I mean, there's a lot of different platforms that folks are using right now for the online worship, and each one has its own benefit and its own drawback. Okay. Um, and I think that each congregation needs to figure out what works best for them, whether it's Facebook or Zoom or YouTube. Right. Um, but we're, we're all exploring that right now. Okay. So, David, uh, uh, as awful as this is, and by the way, let me just say what, what I'm hearing about your clergy just makes me so proud. But as awful as this is, do you see hope anywhere? Are you experiencing hope? And if so, in, in what are you finding that? Yeah. So my hope is in the fact that there is nothing in this world that can silence the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We may be sheltered in place, but we're still proclaiming. Um, and nothing, nothing is going to prevent us from right. doing that. And if we can do that while we're all locked into our homes and still make a proclamation to the world. Yes, that the world can hear. That the world can hear. Um, for, you know, I was in a worship service in one of our churches, and all of a sudden I noticed there were people from Germany and Nicaragua showing up <laughs> online. <laughs> Um, so that's how we're making a proclamation of the tenacity of our faith right. uh, to the whole world. 
And that, that just gives me great hope. Really? Yeah. And the beauty of that is, in our sanctuaries, and as powerful as that worship is, and we all want to get back to that, you're not going to get people from Germany and Nicaragua. No. <laughs> uh, no. There is something happening here. Yeah, I, I am, I'm confident that when we're past this, live stream worship is not going to stop. Yeah. It's going to be this and. <laughs> yeah, and, and there is hope in that. Uh, one of the things, and I, I mentioned this last week in a meeting we were together in, uh, folk are reporting, not everybody, but it, it's not an inconsistent report that they're getting more people showing up in their online worship than they would ever have in their sanctuary. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. So I mean, the one last thing that I would say about a sign of hope is... Um, there was, a, there was a scene that happened in the Bronx this week um, where people came to their windows and balconies and started to applaud the healthcare workers that were going to work and the trash collectors um, and- the Carriers. Yeah, yeah the, the grocery clerks. Yeah. yeah. And that expression of appreciation from a society that has often ignored those who put their lives at risk every day. Right. Um, th that, that just gives me hope in humanity. It was a beautiful moment. And yeah. I remember seeing that on the newsreel that night and I felt the same thing, David. Yeah. Our better angels are emerging. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, David, thank you. Um, I said earlier, I'll say it again. You are, you were in the right place at the right time. And um, your leadership is, is helping to heal a wounded body. And thank you for that. Thank you. We yeah. appreciate all the work of the National Church and we, and we covet the prayers of our brothers and sisters throughout the country. Well, I hope our listeners hear that and we'll take a moment to lift you, David, personally and your clergy and all of the churches and the people of New York up in their prayers. Thank you. Thank you, John. And thank you to our listeners. This has been Conversations with John and my guest today, David Gajewski. Until next time, thank you.